जॉर्ज एथरेज द मैन ऑफ मोड और सर फॉपलिंग फ्लटर एंड अदर वर्कस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स थिएटर्स वर बैंड ड्यूरिंग द एंटर रैगनम अंडर द रीन ऑफ ऑलिवर क्रॉमवेल एज द प्रोटेक्टर चार्ल्स सेकेंड रिटर्न एज द किंग इन सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी एंड वन ऑफ हिज फर्स्ट मूव्स आफ्टर बिकमिंग द किंग वॉज टू री ओपन द थिएटर्स एंड ग्रांट लेटर्स ऑफ पेट एंड टू द थिएटर ओनर्स एंड मैनेजर्स टू हैंडल द थिएटर्स अगेन ड्यूरिंग द सेम टाइम जॉर्ज एथरेज बिगैन हिज करियर एज अ प्ले राइट हिज फर्स्ट प्ले टू बी परफॉर्म्ड वॉज द कॉमिकल रिवेंस और द लव इन द टब द कॉमिकल रिवेंस वॉज परफॉर्म्ड एट द ड्यूक्स थिएटर इन सिक्सटीन Lord Buckhurst was among the audience and he was impressed by Etheridge's comic work. The comical revenge was written in partly rhymed heroic verse like a tragedy, but it was a comedy with certain new and fresh scenes and perspectives. Lord Buckhurst, who later became the Earl of Dorset, became a friend of George Etheridge. While Etheridge enjoyed substantial success with his very first drama, he was not sure of his skills as a dramatist and he took four more years to present his second drama, She Would If She Could, in 1668. Meanwhile, he gained a reputation as a poet and became a poetic beau. He became friends with Lord Rochester and Charles Sidley. Soon he gained further fame and became closer to the king and was announced as one of the king's wits. George Atheris was very friendly and genteel in behavior and often his colleagues and collaborators used to call him Gentle George or and Easy Atheris. She would if she could was again a comedy full of action, wit and spirit. However, it was considered frivolous, immoral and vulgar by the then English public. The play takes the audience into a dreamy fantasy world where the only serious work of life is to flirt. While the comedy made many laugh some people were agitated Atheridge himself was leading an unprincipled and frivolous lifestyle along with the Earl of Rochester It was a comedy with no incongruous romantic verse and hence attained unity of tone in the play Atheridge wasn't very serious about his career as a playwright and he took 8 more years to present his third play which was titled The Man of Mood in the year 1676 The subtitle of the play was Sir Popling Flutter. The Man of Mood or Sir Popling Flutter became an instant hit and proved to be the best comedy of George Etheridge. It is still considered the best comedy of the Restoration period before the works of William Congreve began to appear. One of the major reasons for the success of this play was the fact that many of the characters of the play were based on real life people of that time. The subtitle of the play Sir Popling Flutter is one of the main characters of the play and this character was based on Beau Hewitt the reigning exquisite the hero of the drama is Dorimant and this character was based on Earl of Rochester another character in the play is Madley who was based on George Etheridge himself that is Etheridge caricatured himself too along with some of his friends in this play There is a minor character of a drunken shoemaker in the drama which was also based on a real life shoemaker in London at that time. John Wilmot, the Earl of Rochester and George Atheridge were very close friends. Both lived their life in excesses as libertines. Atheridge and Wilmot both had a daughter by the unmarried actress Elizabeth Barry. The play got successful and famous because of its wit and charm. Summary of the Man of Mood or Sir Popling Flutter. The drama is based on the theme of the restoration of order in love and marriage. The two main characters are Dorimant and Harriet around whom the story revolves. They are deeply in love. However, before Dorimant meets Harriet and falls in love with her, he is already flirting with a lady, Mrs. Lovett. Dorimant is trying to get rid of Mrs. Lovett, but he is not clear about his intentions and keeps fooling her. Mrs Lovett is deeply in love with Dorimant but her unrequited love only brings her scorn and ridicule having long since lost interest in her Dorimant continues to lead her on giving her hope but leaving her in despair on the other hand Harriet's mother Mrs Woodville also doesn't like Dorimant as he has got bad fame she is totally against Harriet meeting Dorimant ever and opposes her Mrs Woodville arranges Harriet's marriage to Belair Belair on the other hand doesn't want to marry Harriet as he is in love with Amelia 
However, his father threatens him of disinheriting him from his fortunes if he doesn't marry Harriet. Balea and Harriet meet and they pretend to like each other while both of them confess to each other that they wish to marry someone else. Balea comes to know that his father is in love with Amelia and wishes to marry her. His father doesn't know that Balea and Amelia are in love. As Balea's father pressurizes Amelia, Balea and Amelia elope and secretly marry against their parents' wishes. Harriet and Dorimant help them through their battle of wits and in the end, everybody accepts the marriage of Balea and Amelia. The wits and tricks of Harriet and Dorimant remind the audience of Shakespeare's Beatrice and Benedict in Much Ado About Nothing from 1598. Mrs. Lovett offers an element of tragedy to the play as she is defenseless against the cruel acts and words of Dorimant. In the end, she loses any hope of being with Dorimant as he succeeds in gaining Harriet's love. Mrs. Lovett says, There's nothing but falsehood and impertinence in this world. All men are villains or fools, as she leaves the stage. Everyone offers good wishes to the new couple of Belair and Amelia as Belair's father accepts their marriage. Dorimant proposes to Harriet, who happily accepts him, while her mother is now in no mood of resisting their love. The drama ends as all the characters except Mrs. Lovett are happy in life and in love. Sir Flopling, Flopling Flutter is also the main character whom Dorimant uses to fool Mrs. Lovett by establishing that she is flirting with Sir Flopling Flutter so that he may accuse her of disloyalty and get, get rid of her. Etheridge represented Sir Fopling Flutter as a comedy character with his eccentric mannerisms. It was one of the first dramas depicting comedy of manner. The man of mode is that in the drama in which George Etheridge pioneered comedy of intrigue and comedy of manner. William Congreve further mastered this art in his dramas. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.